Today, I'm cooking up Julia Child's grilled chicken. Dinner. Well, I'm gonna make it a dinner. Welcome, Jamie and Julia. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. We're dusting off our copy of Mastering the Art of French Cooking, the first one today, from Julia Child, of course. We're headed to the chicken chapter. <laughs> we're gonna go to the page, you know, find the area of the book that has the broken spine, and you flip one page over to the page with the recent tape job, you're gonna find grilled chicken. Poulet gris a la diable. Chicken, chicken of the, grilled chicken of the devil. Chicken grilled with mustard, herbs, and herbs, and breadcrumbs. I like the French title better. Deviled chicken, hell yeah. Here is a fine method for grilled chicken of the devil, which is good either hot or cold. I'm gonna go with hot. The chicken is partially cooked under the grill, then smeared with mustard and herbs, rolled in fresh breadcrumbs, and returned to the grill to brown and finish cooking. Then if I skip to the bottom here, baked whole tomatoes and French beans would go well with it. Yeah, they might, they just might. So I'm gonna tack them onto this meal because I'm gonna turn it into a meal because I'm hungry. So uh, yeah, let's eat soon. Let's cook first, then we'll eat. My bird, this is a three and a half pound young chicken. It ain't no spring chicken, like she says in the book. Well, a young chicken is a spring chicken. So yeah, it is. It's just not as sprung. I have to split the recipe in half because she's telling me to use two birds. I'm gonna use one. Half or quarter of this. And I was just looking at photos online of deviled chicken and they were all spatchcocked, which is like the back spine removed and you like open it up like a book. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm gonna go with today. Throw the giblets in the bowl there, save them for a stock. So I gotta cut through the spine. Right, open it, yeah. Okay, I've never done this before, so I'm just trying to wing it, no pun intended. Before anyone asks, yes, I'm using my bone knife. And out goes the spine. So I believe that has been spatchcocked. Dry this off with some paper towels. How about the other side too? You might as well just kind of, yeah. I'm just gonna remove some of these smaller bones, like specifically these rib bones. Three ounces of butter. Give that a quick melt. Already forgot that I was splitting the recipe in half. It wasn't supposed to be three ounces, it's supposed to be one and a half. But you know, what are the chances that I'm gonna be using all the butter? It's pretty high. What am I doing right now? Two tablespoons of oil. One, two. Okay, mix that together. Back over here. Yeah, just make sure there's no feathers in your chicken. There wasn't for me, I'm, I'm in the clear. Paint the bird with butter. Do it thoroughly, man. So I'm gonna do this inside too, even under the armpits. Sometimes I wonder why I even use the brush at all when I can just dunk my hands in the butter and just go to town much quicker. She doesn't say anything about the under the skin with the butter, but I figure why the hell not. Okay, that is smothered. I've been meaning to make this recipe for a while. Grilled chicken, but in order to do so, you need a grill pan. <sighs> Which I finally have. Yeah, it's like cast iron, you know, it's... Oh. Place this skin side down, that's a perfect fit. Oh, you dumb dumb. Place the chicken on the hot grill, hot grill. Okay. So yeah, heat this up first. Doi. The, actually, the very first step of this recipe, preheat grill to moderately hot. So yeah, you missed that one, James. Skin side down to start. Yeah. So it's 10 minutes per side, and every five minutes, I gotta baste it with butter. The skin is sticking a little bit to the pan, only on the one side. The pan is too big for the burner, so I'm just gonna keep rotating around. I gotta flip this without ruining the skin, you know? How does, how does one do that? No, that's not gonna be... There's too much butter in there to make that work. I'm glad I decided not to do that. He 
easy on the skin there, buckaroo. Ah, butter is just like on another level right now. It's just exploding. And one final base. Okay. You're not really telling me what to do here, Julia. Uh, just leave the chicken as it is. Okay, and uh, yeah, uh, basting fat I'm gonna need for the next part. So I'm just gonna pour it out of here. Stay in place, chicken. Do not go anywhere, chicken. Stick to the pan for a little. I... Hot! I mean, that's one way to get the chicken off the pan because it was stuck on there. Some of the decisions I make sometimes just irk me a little. That didn't happen. Here's my basting fat. I'm gonna need this for the next part. So let's just put that off to the side for a second. Let's just clean up the evidence. I'm gonna circle back to this deviled chicken thing um, because I was just reading up on it while uh, the butter was splatting in my face. The name is a reference to the heat of the dish, which is adjusted with the ingredients like Tabasco sauce, cayenne pepper, and mustard. The recipe I'm following has mustard and cayenne pepper. No mention of Tabasco. I can add it if I want, if I want to be saucy. Finally chopped up shallots. Fresh thyme. I have completely forgotten Oy! to salt this chicken lightly after I grilled it. All right, let's, let's keep going here. I'm gonna need a bowl. Perfect. And I need to add in three tablespoons of a prepared French mustard. That's three tablespoons. Quarter teaspoon of thyme and one and a half tablespoons of chopped shallot in with the mustard. Just a pinch of pepper, pinch or a little bit more than a pinch of cayenne pepper. And you know what? Let's just, uh, let's get a bit saucy here. That's not where I keep it. One little drop of Tabasco sauce. No, two drops. One, two. Just like whisk that together and I drop by drop, I gotta beat in half of this basting fat. That's enough. Reserve that for later. And this is ready for prime time. So what do I gotta do? Paint the chicken with the mustard mixture. Interesting. Oi! Freezer is open for some reason. What was I doing? Basting, painting, reserving, painting. My brush from earlier. <gasps> That's what it says, right? Paint the chicken pieces with the mustard mixture. Yes, to confirm, yes. Don't forget about under the armpits or wing pits. They have wing pits. Okay, I have sufficiently painted the hell out of this chicken. Again, let's put this over here. Okay, quarter pound of fresh white bread crumbs using homemade type of uh, white bread. This is the bread I'm using today. It's sliced bread. It's, it's a nicer loaf of sliced bread. This ain't no wonder bread. Yeah, I just need half of that because I'm only making half of it. Okay. What do I need? My food processor. Blade in, always important and pulse. Pour the breadcrumbs onto a big plate. Use the pizza pan. Roll the chicken in the crumbs, patting it on so it adheres. Very interesting. And I'm just gonna just cover the hell out of this thing. That's, I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You can do what you want. And the bottom half too. Yeah, do the bottom too. You made enough for everything. This next part is where I gotta take some liberties um, because I don't really know what she means. She's, you need a rack for your grilling pan, but apparently a rack comes with a grilling pan, didn't come with mine, nor does it come with many of them available. So I don't really know what she's talking about. I'm just gonna wing it today because I have a cooling rack that I use for baking. It's a rack. It will work. I put it on top and then I take the chicken and arrange the chicken pieces skin side down on the rack on the grill pan. Skin side down, okay. You're gonna do it, aren't you? You're gonna do it. Just, if you're gonna do it, just be careful when you do it. Stick to the pan for a little. Whew. 
I did it. Pour in half the remaining basting fat over top of the chicken. You know what? I was about to pour that on top and I was like, you know what? I probably should introduce you to the other members of my uh, party. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna boil up some water in a saucepan because as I mentioned, I'm gonna make two sides to go along with this chicken. First side is green beans, French beans to be precise, buttered French beans two, the sequel with lemon juice and parsley. So what I gotta start with is blanching the beans. Add the beans into some boiling salted water, bring it back up to a boil, 10 minutes, 10 to 15. Then Big Bertha, with a really quick cameo appearance. Let's heat that up. After blanching these green beans, they need to be tender, but with the slightest hint of crunchiness, something like that. So uh, into a dry pan, evaporate the moisture out of these things. So some salt and um, pepper. I'm gonna add in some butter. Toss it. Lemon juice. Toss, more butter, toss, drops of lemon juice, toss. I was honestly just eyeballing it because uh, of reasons I really don't want to get into right now. But a uh, little more lemon juice. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. Keep them nice and fresh and warm and whatever. Soft to the side. I promise tomatoes. I'm gonna give you tomatoes. This is whole baked tomatoes, and it's a seemingly super simple recipe. Uh, I'm just gonna hammer this out super quickly, but I get the gist of it. So I gotta cut out the stem very cautiously, making as little a hole as possible. Okay, I mean, I could have done a much better job than that. I don't know. Julia would not be pleased with how big these holes were. Salt and pepper the inside of the hole. Brush olive oil all over them, and then stem side down onto my roasting pan. Do you really need the brush when you do it like this, Jamie? Not really, but whatever. It's been done, it's done. They don't like to be crowded. Roasting tin also has to be oiled, so oil that up um, after the fact. No, do it before. What's next is just baking these for 10 minutes. It's more or less all you gotta do. Uh, but after you've done so, you have to serve them immediately. So uh, just because of the order which I'm doing everything, I have them prepped. I'm gonna put them off over here. Let's move back to the chicken. I have the remaining basting fat. I'm gonna pour half of it on top now. Okay, just half of it, half of it. Brown this slowly for 10 minutes under a moderately hot grill. My broiler setting is on the hottest it can go. Uh, there's only two settings, high and low. If it's too high, I'll just turn it down. We just learn as we do. Very curious how this is all gonna work out. Because that chicken isn't fully cooked through yet. 20 minutes under the broiler. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, we gotta flip this chicken. It's the easiest way to do this. Just, just go for it. With the remaining basting fat, just baste the hell out of it. In it goes. 10 minutes. What am I, don't touch it you dumbass. 20 minutes in total, 10 minutes each side. And it has browned actually really nicely on the top. However, I have my doubts about how cooked through this thing is. So I'm just gonna check it in a few spots, make sure that everything is hunky-dory. I, I honestly don't know. Yeah, it's not, it's not cooked through. 131 degrees Fahrenheit, 132. It's rising, but it's rising slowly. Down on the ground, hello. Um, I didn't wanna risk burning any more of the top with the broiler on, so I turned it off and I've got the oven on at 400 degrees Fahrenheit just for a few minutes just to get the chicken up to the temperature I needed to get up to, which is now. It's on there now. We're good, we're good. Okay. All right, chicken comes out. And now with the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, the tomatoes go in for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
salt and pepper on the tomatoes. So green beans and parsley on top of it, like everything, right? A couple, a little parsley on the tomatoes. So a little parsley on the chicken and a little parsley, a little parsley for everyone. Order up. good in here, you know? It's like something that just makes you feel good inside. It's just a really nice, different approach to cooking chicken for me. It's almost like a mix between like having it on the barbecue, but also like having it roasted. It's just like, it's in between. The outside had a really nice crunch to it and a lot of flavor with that mustard. You could pick it up. It was kind of subtle, but you could still pick it up. The breadcrumbs, I think were my favorite addition to everything because it just added the, like a crunch to the chicken which was really nice. Grilled chicken of the devil, devil grilled chicken. I didn't find it especially spicy and I don't know if that was really the main goal. I thought it was, but it wasn't especially spicy. The two side dishes are things that I'm actually gonna carry over into my everyday cooking because I can see myself making these things all the time, especially those tomatoes. Super straightforward, simple, what? Took 10 minutes in the oven, done. Juicy as hell, lots of flavor. Now adding lemon juice into green beans really just elevates them into something that is a little more than just beans. It's a game changer for the bean world. I'm cooking with beans all the time because I have to stay healthy outside of the show. As, during the week, I eat beans. That's everything we have today. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. Julia, 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 you're killing me with these dishes. Oh yeah.